Chapter 6 The Demon's Diner Tommy wasn't sure when to expect getting a call on his phone from an unknown number, but he waited out the rest of the week watching his phone with the vigilance of a hawk. If supervillains were going to start showing up at his door for healing, he couldn't afford to miss a single ring. Not to mention, he was hoping Siren would call so that Tommy could yell at him for giving out his name and address like it was nothing. That bastard was going to get an earful next time Tommy talked to him. But the week passed and his phone stayed silent. The tension Tommy had began to loosen its grip on his shoulders, and he was gradually able to push the worry to the back of his mind. Although things still weren't completely normal with Tubbo and Ronbu, admitting their marriage plans seemed to ease things in the household at least a bit. Tubbo would obnoxiously flirt with Ronbu every chance he got, while Ronbu threatened a divorce every day. Tommy teased the two of them about their upcoming union relentlessly, which neither of them particularly enjoyed, but Tommy found hilarious all the same. He had a feeling there was still more they weren't telling him. They still shared secretive glances. They still spent hours out in the evening and only telling Tommy they were dealing with work stuff, although the vast majority of Tubbo's work was stuff he could do at home on his computer. But it was better. They weren't as tense around Tommy and Tommy hoped that if they were still keeping stuff from him, they would let him in on it soon. In the meantime, work was still a nice escape for Tommy. Wilbur continued to show up at the cafe nearly every day, and together they'd gone back to the fried chicken truck a few more times after Tommy had closed for the night. Every time, Wilbur would insist on paying for Tommy's food, despite his protests. Although Tommy didn't like Wilbur spending so much money on him, he knew he wouldn't be able to afford it himself and the fried chicken was really good. Things were just pretty nice, save for the nagging worry brought on by the fact that Tommy was basically an on-call doctor, of course. One night, Tommy was closing up the cafe like usual. Wilbur was hanging around still, waiting by the door for Tommy to finish wiping all the counters down. He was typing rapidly onto his phone, the blue glow of his screen reflecting against his glasses. As Tommy checked to make sure there weren't any grounds left in the espresso machine, Wilbur spoke up. Do you mind if we go eat somewhere else, other than the chicken truck tonight? Wilbur asked, pocketing his phone and glancing up at Tommy. Tommy shrugged. It's your money, man. We go where you want. Well, there's a pretty good diner here I was thinking we could eat at, but there's something else you should know before we go. Wilbur said, sounding a bit sheepish as he pushed his hair back from his face. Pausing his cleaning, Tommy looked up to meet Wilbur's eyes. Is something wrong? No, nothing like that, Wilbur reassured him. It's just, well, if you want to say no, you can. But my brother and dad want to go get dinner, so I thought you could come with me and meet them. This made Tommy do a double take. Wilbur wanted Tommy to meet his family? But why? Why? Tommy was just some random kid Wilbur hung out with sometimes. Why the hell would his family want to meet him? I mean, I don't want to intrude on your family bonding shit, Tommy muttered, looking back down at the espresso machine. No, don't worry about that. I want you there. I think you would get along really well with my dad and brother, and they're pretty curious about you too, Wilbur reassured him. Wait, they know who I am? Wilbur nodded. Yeah, of course they do. They know about all my friends. Friends. Were they friends? Tommy supposed it made sense, considering how often the two hung out now. But for some reason, Tommy hadn't had the full realization that he and Wilbur were actually friends. Hell, Tubbo and Rombu still had no idea Wilbur even existed. Oh. Tommy said, rather dumbly, hands resting on the edge of the espresso machine. So... We're really friends? Wilbur blinked. Yeah, of course we are. At least I'd like to think so. No, yeah, of course. Sorry, that was stupid. Tommy, you don't need to apologize. Wilbur said, cutting Tommy off as embarrassment reddened his cheeks. Do you want to come to the diner or not? There's no pressure. Tommy stared at his hands, noticing the ground coffee that was stuck under his nails and the way the skin on his palm shone with his many past burns. Did he want to meet Wilbur's family? He didn't like talking to adults all that much, 
with Puffy and Wilbur being the two exceptions. But if they were Wilbur's family, that probably meant they were a lot like him. Chill, good at joking around, and fun to hang out with. Also, if Tommy went, he'd get another free dinner, which was hard to turn down. Yeah, I'll go. Tommy agreed. Wilbur beamed. Cool. I'll let them know you're coming. Nodding, Tommy hurried up his cleaning. He finished wiping down the counters and double-checked to make sure the espresso machine was in working condition. Then he hung his apron up on the wall, checked his sweatshirt for any gross coffee stains, and then slung his backpack over his shoulder to join Wilbur by the door. After locking up, they headed down the street under the glow of the street lights that had become so familiar to Tommy. He shoved his hands in his pockets as he walked, anxiety buzzing in his chest as he tried to remember how to make a good impression on someone. The last thing he wanted was to piss Wilbur's family off, not after he had just realized that Wilbur was his friend. "'You look like you're about ready to jump out of your skin,' Wilbur commented after they'd been walking in silence for a few minutes. "'I'm fine,' Tommy snapped, hunching his shoulders and staring at the ground. Wilbur frowned. "'Wait, are you nervous?' Tommy shook his head. Me? Nervous? That's ridiculous. A big man like me doesn't get nervous. Although he tried to go for his usual brand of loud and obnoxious, the attempt was weak, and even Tommy had the urge to wince at how forced it sounded. Oh, you're nervous about meeting my family, aren't you? Wilbur crooned. No, I'm not. Fuck off. Wilbur just laughed, and suddenly there was an arm wrapping around Tommy's shoulders pulling him close to Wilbur's side as they continued walking down the street. "'You don't have to be nervous, Toms,' Wilbur reassured, his smile warm as he ruffled Tommy's hair. "'Trust me, they already like you from everything I've told them. You don't need to worry about making a good impression.' Grumbling, Tommy resisted the urge to lean further into Wilbur's side as he focused on not bumping into Wilbur's ridiculously long legs. "'Of course I do, it's your family.' I don't want them to think I'm an asshole. Well, you are kind of an asshole, Wilbur teased, expertly dodging the hand Tommy swiped at his face. <laughs> I am too, so they get it. You're like a mini-me. They like me, so of course they're going to like you. First off, bitch, I'm not mini-you, Tommy argued, still not making an effort to get Wilbur's arm off him. I am so much cooler than you will ever be. I get so many more women than you, and I'm so much bigger, and I'm not a pretentious prick who wears hipster glasses. Oh, shush, gremlin. Just accept it. You want to be just like me when you grow up, because you're like my little baby brother. Wilbur teased, although there was an undercurrent of warmth in his tone that made Tommy want to smile. I'm not your little brother. Tommy bit out, although the attempt was half-hearted. You're just a bitchy customer of mine that'll take advantage of the fact that I have to pretend I like my job. Sure, Toms, sure. Wilbur nodded, clearly not believing a word he was saying. In truth, Tommy didn't believe what he was saying either. Although he knew Wilbur was just joking around, there was something so kind in his voice that made it stick in Tommy's head, playing on repeat. Wilbur was just a customer he'd gotten close with, but now he was a friend. A friend who joked about Tommy being like a little brother to him. It made Tommy feel as though the sun was shining right on his face, turning everything into gold and warming him from the inside out. Of course, he wouldn't ever admit that out loud. They turned a corner, and the diner came into view. It was the epitome of a classic 24-hour diner. The outside was painted robin's egg blue, with large windows looking into the restaurant to reveal cherry-red booths and black-and-white checkered tile. On top of the diner, there was a neon sign lit up in shades of crimson, reading out, The Demon's Diner, in cursive lettering. The name did not match with the cute aesthetic of the place at all, and Tommy wondered what the heck that was all about. Here we are, Wilbur told him, squeezing his shoulder as he guided Tommy towards the front. This place has the best muffins in the entire city, let me tell you. Why is it called The Demon's Diner? Isn't that a little... Scary sounding, Tommy questioned as they approached the front door. You'll see why, Wilbur reassured him, pulling open the door and gesturing for Tommy to walk through first. As soon as he stepped inside, the smell of baked bread washed over Tommy, making his mouth water. He could hear the sizzling of burgers on a grill 
while spotting a stack of muffins piled high on a plate steaming on one of the counters. A waitress, with a red uniform and a rose tucked behind her ear, passed by them, carrying a silver tray that had waffles dusted with powdered sugar and fruit piled on top. Tommy's stomach growled, and Wilbur laughed. We'll sit down quickly, don't worry, Wilbur reassured him. He glanced around the restaurant, clearly looking for someone. Do you need help finding a table? A voice suddenly asked. Tommy looked over at the same time Wilbur did, and his heart instantly leapt to his throat as he took in the figure standing in front of them. The figure was... tall. That was the first coherent thought Tommy could make about it. It was taller than Wilbur, and probably even Ronbu, which was an impressive feat, considering they were both freakish giants. It was wearing some kind of hooded black robe, with a rather hilarious frilly red apron tied over it. And when Tommy tried to get a look at the thing's face, he couldn't make any individual features out, save for glowing white eyes. It was as if the void had been given a face and a voice, and Tommy resisted the urge to shudder. Hey, bad. Wilbur greeted cheerfully, as if it was perfectly normal to see a strange void creature standing in the middle of a diner. How have things been? Business still good. Wilbur, it's been so long since you came here, I almost didn't recognize you, you muffinhead. Bad teased, his voice friendly, despite his foreboding appearance. Things have been good, though. Business has been pretty well, all things considered. The creature, bad, apparently, then paused as his glowing eyes flickered over to Tommy. Oh, you brought a new little muffin here, haven't you? Wilbur grinned and squeezed the arm around Tommy's shoulder again. Yep, this is Tommy, a friend of mine. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Tommy, Bad said, a glowing mouth appearing from the void of his face to smile at him. I'm bad, I run this diner. Any friend of Wilbur's is a friend of mine, so feel free to stop in whenever, and you'll get the VIP treatment. Tommy resisted the urge to cringe back from the creature, and nodded instead. Oh, thank you, he said quietly. Noticing his discomfort, Wilbur spoke up again. We're here to meet Tech and Phil. Are they here yet? Turning his glowing eyes away from Tommy, Bad nodded. Yep, right over at your usual table. I'll send Hannah over to get your orders in a minute. Thanks, Bad, Wilbur said with a wave before he started pulling Tommy towards the back of the diner. As soon as Bad was out of earshot, Wilbur leaned down to whisper into Tommy's ear. You don't need to be afraid of him. I know he looks scary, but that's just because of his powers. Trust me, he's one of the kindest people you'll ever meet. Tommy nodded in understanding, although he was still relieved to be away from those glowing eyes. He trusted Wilbur when he said he didn't have to be afraid of Bad, but the guy was still a bit unnerving. Wilbur! Another voice then called out. Having been distracted by Bad, Tommy had forgotten the entire reason they were at this diner in the first place. His anxiety returned in full force as he noticed two men sitting at the table in the far back corner of the diner, one of whom was standing up and grinning at the two of them as they made their way over. Right. Tommy was meeting Wilbur's family. The man standing up had to have been Wilbur's father, although he wasn't as old as Tommy expected him to be. He was shorter than Wilbur and Tommy both, with straw blonde hair that fell to his chin and kind blue eyes the color of faded denim. Tommy also noticed the man had earrings, with one ear simply having a gold stud in it and the other having a dangling gold chain with a bright emerald on the end. That couldn't have been cheap. Hey, Dad, Wilbur said casually, stopping in front of the table and finally letting his arm drop from Tommy's shoulders. Tommy, this is my dad, Phil, and the one sitting down because he's antisocial is my brother, Technoblade. Stop telling people I'm antisocial. The man still sitting down protested, his flat voice betraying an American accent. If Tommy was startled by the emerald on Phil's earring, just glancing at Technoblade gave Tommy a complete shock. Even though the man was sitting down, Tommy could tell he was built. Broad shoulders crowded the booth, contrasted by blossom pink hair that was tied back into a low bun on the back of his neck. Glasses sat perched in front of eyes so brown they were almost crimson. 
He had several gold earrings in his ears, with gold chains dangling from his lobes and a few gold-encrusted gems sitting higher up in his helix. He also had a long, golden necklace that sat on top of his button-down shirt, and Tommy noticed a similar emerald to the one he saw in Phil's earring, acting as a pendant. How rich were these people? Wilbur's voice suddenly brought Tommy back to reality, and he glanced away from Technoblade to see Wilbur giving him a concerned look. Oh, shit, uh, sorry, I zoned out for a second, Tommy muttered, ears burning as he resisted the urge to shrink into Wilbur's side. Um, nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you too, mate, Phil said, his voice gentle as he smiled at Tommy. Wheels told us a lot about you. I liked the note you wrote on my cup that one time. Techno chimed in as Wilbur dragged Tommy down to sit in the booth across from Phil and Techno. You're right, Wilbur is pretentious. Hey, like you're any better than me. Wilbur protested, slumping down in his seat. He's got a point, Tommy agreed, smirking at Technoblade. You're not exactly humble yourself with all that gold shit in your ears. Techno frowned, hand coming up to mess with some of the earrings in his ears. I like gold, what can I say? Makes you look all, uh, Austin. Tommy started, before realizing he couldn't remember the word he was trying to say. Ostentatious? Phil offered. Yeah, ostentatious. Tommy nodded. Wilbur snorted. I mean, he's got a point, Tech. The gold is a bit much. Techno opened his mouth to reply when a figure stopped in front of their table, drawing all their eyes up. It was the waitress with the rose in her hair from earlier, and she had four menus in her hand. Hi guys, it's good to see you again, the woman greeted, passing out the menus to the four of them. Hey Hannah, Phil waved. Can you get us a round of water for the table while we look at the menu? Sure thing, Phil. I'll be right back, Hannah said, smiling at them before rushing off again. You guys must come here a lot if everyone knows you. Tommy commented as he started idly looking through the menu. His eyes were immediately drawn to a picture of chocolate chip pancakes with strawberries scattered around it, and his mouth started watering again. We do. It's one of our favorite places to eat at, Phil explained, tapping his fingers against the menu absentmindedly. What are you thinking of getting? Wilbur asked, looking over Tommy's shoulder at his menu. Chocolate chip pancakes sound pretty damn poggers, Tommy said. The pancakes are great, Wilbur told him, nodding in approval. But then again, pretty much everything here is really good. Bad and Skeppy are both great in the kitchen. Wait, can someone explain what poggers means? Techno asked, cutting into Wilbur and Tommy's conversation. Tommy rolled his eyes. Of course you wouldn't know it. Poggers basically is a way to say something is awesome or cool. Techno stared at him blankly for a moment blinking a few times before leaning over to Phil. Phil, do children scare you these days as much as they scare me? They sure do, mate. Phil nodded. Don't understand them in the slightest. Snorting, Tommy leaned back in his seat. You should definitely be afraid of me. I'm extremely intimidating. I don't know. There are some supervillains that probably would have you beat there. Techno commented, eyes still skimming over the menu. Tommy thought back to Siren flicking French fries at his forehead, or Blade sitting awkwardly in his living room while he healed Zephyrus. Of course they could be intimidating, but it was hard to think of them that way when Tommy had already seen them in such casual situations. He was about to further press his point about being intimidating when Hannah returned, setting down waters in front of each of them before pulling a notepad out of her apron. We ready to order? I think so, right? Phil asked, glancing at each member of the table. They all nodded, and Phil smiled. They all went around saying their orders, Phil with Belgian waffles, Technoblade with some kind of veggie burger, Wilbur with a normal burger, and Tommy with his pancakes. Hannah scribbled all of it down quickly, finishing it off with a flourish of her pen. All right, we'll have that- oh, wait! Wilbur cut her off suddenly. Also four blueberry muffins. Tommy here hasn't gotten to try the muffins before. Well, this is your lucky day, then. Hannah smiled at him. I'll have that right out for you. Hannah disappeared again, leaving the group in a moment of silence. 
Tommy took a sip of his water and tried not to shrink at the awkward air that had fallen over the group for the first time since they got there. So, Tommy. Phil started, breaking the silence with surprising ease. Will told us you work in a cafe. But not much else. Are you in school? Tommy shook his head. No, I graduated high school early by taking extra classes. Impressive. Do you plan on going to college? Nah, not really my thing. Even if it was, I definitely couldn't afford it. Tommy explained, folding his hands over his glass. I just graduated so I could take more shifts at the cafe. Gotta pay the rent somehow, you know. He waited for the surprise to set in, as the group realized he didn't live with parents, but it never came. Instead, Phil just nodded in understanding. Who do you live with? He asked instead. My two roommates. Tobo and Ranbu are their names, Tommy told them. How'd you meet? Techno then chimed in. Now this was where Tommy shrunk back. It wasn't like he was ashamed of admitting he'd been in the system. Hell, he'd told Siren about that without thinking twice. But it was different this time, because he was with Wilbur and his family. Tommy hadn't told Wilbur much about himself, outside of his age, and that he wasn't in school. While he wasn't embarrassed that he'd been in foster care, he knew what normal people thought about it. The pitying looks they would shoot his way. The way they would treat him as if he were made of glass. He didn't want Wilbur, or his family, to start treating him like that. But he knew Wilbur. Wilbur didn't seem like the type to pull that shit on him. He knew Tommy wasn't some broken, sad kid because of his past. They were friends, he'd said it himself. Tommy could trust that Wilbur wouldn't start treating him differently. Right? They were waiting for an answer, and Tommy didn't want to lie. So he swallowed down his nerves. In a group home, we were all in the foster system, but all of us were problem kids and kept getting kicked out. So we ended up in a group home together. We all just kind of clicked really well with each other and made plans to go out of the system and get our own place, which we did, Tommy explained. He wanted to keep his head down, but he had to know their reactions. Glancing up through the hair falling over his forehead, he expected to be met with sympathetic gazes or pitying frowns. But again, they surprised him. None of them seemed to blink twice at the admission. Will, Tech, were either of you ever put in a group home? Phil asked instead, making Tommy almost choke on his water. I was in one for a while. That place sucked. Techno shrugged. I almost got put in one, but I ran away before they could. Wilbur explained, smirking into his drink. Tommy gaped, first staring at Techno, before turning his full attention to Wilbur. He... he had been in the system? You never told me you were in the system, Tommy said quietly, staring at Wilbur in shock. Wilbur shrugged. You never said you were, either. What, you ran? Tommy asked, having heard of the kids who tried to escape and live on their own. He had tried it himself, multiple times, but had been dragged back each time, with his longest run lasting only a few months. Yep. After I got kicked out of my last foster home, they wanted to put me in a group home, so I said, fuck that, and ran. Phil found me on the streets about a year later. Wilbur explained his smile softening at the mention of his dad. What the- how'd you last that long? My longest record was four months. A year? Either that had been a hellish year for Wilbur, or he had some advantage that most kids didn't. Let's just say I had my ways. Okay. Like, that wasn't ominous as fuck. Your ways weren't that great. Need I remind you, I found you half-starved and looking a stone's throw away from freezing to death. Phil said, giving his son a knowing look. Well, I still hadn't been caught, and I was still alive after a year on the streets, which isn't too bad for a twelve-year-old, Wilbur argued, taking a sip of his water. Wait, okay, so what happened exactly? Will ran from the system and was on the streets for a year before Phil found him, but how did you end up with Techno? Tommy asked, trying to wrap his head around the story. Phil folded his hands in front of him. I found Wilbur first, after he'd been living on the streets for quite a while. It took ages to get him to trust me. 
But once he did, and I got him to come live with me, I actually registered to be a foster parent legally. It took a fuck ton of arguing, and going through loopholes and shit, but I managed to get legal guardianship of Will. Once I had that, I got a call not too much later about another boy who needed a placement, which happened to be Techno. After a year of us all living together, I adopted both of them. So we've been a family ever since. Damn. How lucky for Wilbur and Techno. Of course, it wasn't lucky that Wilbur had lived on the streets for a full year, but Tommy couldn't help the twinge of jealousy that curled in his chest all the same. From what he could see, both Wilbur and Techno really loved their father. They'd gotten the happy ending all foster kids dreamt of. Someone to love them. It was fine that Tommy had never gotten that ending, though. He had Tubbo and Rondu as his family. He didn't need anyone else. So you're emancipated? Phil asked after a moment, when it became clear Tommy wasn't going to say anything else. Yep. Was a bitch to get worked out. But we managed it. Tommy explained, leaning back in his seat. And now you make my lattes. Wilbur teased, nudging Tommy in the side with his elbow. Unfortunately, I do, Tommy grumbled. But at least I'm good at making coffee. I have to admit that's true, Wilbur agreed, tapping his chin. He glanced back over to Phil and Techno. You guys should go by the cafe sometime. Tommy's a pretty damn good barista, except he'll cuss you out while he makes your drink. It's part of my charm, Tommy added, baring his teeth at Wilbur in something that was only reminiscent of a smile. A flash of red in the corner of his eye signaled Hannah's return. She handed out the plates of food, and Tommy's pupils grew twice their size when he saw the steaming chocolate chip pancakes placed in front of him. Wilbur laughed at Tommy's excitement. Eat up, gremlin. You look like you're about to tear those to shreds. Don't have to tell me twice, Tommy replied before he started digging into the food. Holy shit. These guys were right. This was delicious. The pancakes were perfectly fluffy, the chocolate chips were melted just the right amount, and the strawberries on top were sweet, but not overly so. So engrossed in his food, Tommy didn't notice the concerned stares he was getting from the two men across the table. You weren't kidding, Will, Phil muttered. He's a gremlin. Or a rabid raccoon, Techno added. For the last time, I'm not a goddamn raccoon, Tommy snapped not noticing the chocolate he had smeared from the corner of his lip to his chin. The three men at the table all shared identical looks before bursting into laughter, startling Tommy away from his food. It took several minutes for Tommy to notice the chocolate on his face, but by then the damage had been done. The table wouldn't shut up about him being a raccoon after that. The rest of dinner went really well. They talked a bit about several other things, with Phil asking Tommy what he did in his free time, and Techno asking him when the last time he'd read a book was. Wilbur and Tommy got into another bantering session, which Techno and Phil watched with a mixture of amusement and exhaustion. Tommy finally tried one of Bad's muffins, and nearly cried at how good it was. Then, despite his protests, Wilbur ended up ordering another four muffins for Tommy to take home. Tommy had to admit, he liked Techno and Phil. Techno had the best deadpan out of anyone he'd ever met and Tommy liked how little bullshit there was with him. Phil very much seemed to wear his heart on his sleeve, his face softening every time they were talking about Wilbur and Techno as kids, or whenever Wilbur said something nice about Tommy. He also seemed genuinely interested in getting to know Tommy, unlike most adults he'd met in the past. And most surprisingly, no one told him to shut up when he started rambling about spider facts on the way back to his apartment building which was a huge win in Tommy's book. While he knew he had to be careful, these were still adults, after all, and Tommy wasn't going to let himself become another charity case on the off chance Phil wanted another fixer-upper kid. He really liked the Soot family. More than he thought he would. When Tubbo and Ronbu asked Tommy where he'd been that night, and where he'd gotten the box of muffins from, he told them he was out with a friend, and ignored the way they pushed for clarification. If they could have their secrets, so could he. He wasn't ready to share Wilbur with them yet, and if they had a problem with that, it was their problem. That night, Tommy fell asleep with a full stomach 
and laughter in his ears.